here. It's finally here! Ugh. What? What? What's here? You've been waiting. You've been asking. You've been pleading. The first HDMI 2.1 capture card has just arrived for you to review. <laughs> Avermedia sent their new capture card already? It wasn't supposed to ship for a couple more weeks, I don't think. No, no, not that one. This one is a little different. I ordered it just for you. Now review it! Who? Review? Who is it from? Yeah, this capture card is a weird one. $260 for an HDMI 2.1 pass-through capture card before anyone else has actually released theirs. Seems like a good deal. It's got an audio extractor, both the Spitif Toslink optical out as well as 3.5 millimeter. It's got a mic input. It's got knobs for your volume levels, which most capture cards with audio pass-through either have software only control or no control at all. So that's kind of cool. You've got HDMI 2.1 input and output, USB-C, an indicator to indicate based on color whether you're on USB 2 or USB 3 ports so you don't mess that up. But it requires DC power. Despite only needing five volts of power that the USB-C port could totally provide, it does nothing without the DC power plug plugged in. A little status light on the top. It's a weird capture card, but it looks like everything else. It's just from a brand I've never heard of. This is from Max Square. Max Square is not a company that I have ever covered before or have ever even looked into prior to this video. They seem to make all sorts of just kind of generic versions of audio video gear. They've got matrixes, they've got Dante audio converters, network video devices, little things like that. And this seems to be their first foray into building out some sort of capture card. We'll open it up at some point, I guess, and see what chipset is inside, but doesn't look like anything else that has been on the market yet. Specs wise, it is kind of in line with what we've heard so far from the other companies making HDMI 2.1 capture cards, which none of them have come out yet, in that you have 4K 120 hertz pass through, 1440p 120, 144 hertz pass through. We'll talk more about that in a moment. 1080p 240 hertz pass through. And then you get 4K 60 capture over USB in NV12, which is the uncompressed, not MJPEG or H.264 format, which is great, awesome. I would not expect to see this, especially on like a, a no-name card, so to speak, which is cool. Uh, but the specs start to get weirder and weirder the further down the rabbit hole I go with this thing. First and foremost, there's no VRR support, so no adaptive sync, variable refresh rate, that kind of support. Doesn't show up as G-Sync in my graphics card panel. The consoles don't report any VRR support when I try it. None of that, and my PS5 seems to think that it doesn't support 1440p input. The EVID, the display information that it act, when it acts as a monitor to whatever you connect it to, is very inconsistent in what it actually reports that it's capable of, and that causes a lot of the issues that I've run into. So for example, in the OBS options for capture, you have things like 1080p 240 hertz, you've got 1440p 144 hertz listed, but when you connect it to a display, it doesn't support any of that to your computer. It only supports 1440p at 120 hertz, which is fine, and I think everyone should use that if you're capturing 60 FPS footage anyway, but it supports capturing more frames than it supposedly supports passing through, and 1080p 240 has, like, it, it, it's super weird. So you have to enable or like manually add a lot of these other formats that you might expect to pass through with custom resolutions in the NVIDIA or AMD control panels. I was able to get 1080p 240 working, 1440p 144 hertz working. I was also able to get 2560 by 1080 ultra wide and 3440 by 1440 ultra wide pass through with custom resolutions, but only at 60 hertz. I was also theoretically, I don't actually have the panels to test this on hand, but just connecting the input to the capture card, I was able to force a custom resolution of 1440p 240 hertz and 1080p 360 hertz. And these seem to have taken on the card and worked. But again, I don't have a compatible monitor on the other end to verify that it was passing that signal properly through. But it very clearly displays when it doesn't support something with this cute little rainbow no video signal. And it wasn't giving me that after I got the custom reses configured correctly. So I think you can pass through those newer formats, which thus far, all of the listed USB capture cards from Avermedia, Asus, and so on that have announced their HDMI 2.1 capture cards 1440p 240 has not been on that list, 1080p 360 has not been. So theoretically works with this, but I can't fully verify. But along with some of that weirdness, you also have, if you enable 4K 120 hertz output on your device, on your computer or console, you cannot capture 4K with the capture card, even at 60 FPS. It just says no support. 
you have to drop it down to 1440p. Now you can capture 1440p 120 hertz or 120 frames per second from the 4K 120 frames per second, or you can capture 60 FPS. So clearly it can do both resolution and frame rate scaling, but it just can't do the frame rate scaling for 4K for some reason, which is super weird. I think for most people streaming and doing content creation, that's not gonna be a problem at all, but it is weird, especially if you wanna leave it on like use default format in OBS. If you pop in a 4K 120 game console, like PS5, Xbox Series X, it's gonna say it doesn't work because the default format for it is 4K 60 and it's just not gonna show anything, which is really weird. We'll talk about more issues in a sec. Latency wise, I was pretty impressed. Pass through is real time as best as I can tell, maybe half a millisecond, which is about average. So nothing to worry about there and playing on it, I never felt anything. The preview latency that I test on all these capture cards running through OBS's preview, when you subtract the monitors built in, you know, latency added onto it, we're looking at 53 to 55-ish milliseconds, but it would vary a lot, like a lot more than the usual capture cards. It was like kind of all over the place, but when it was consistent, it was around 55-ish milliseconds, which is pretty competitive. But when I tried it out, like playing from the preview, especially when I was trying to do 1080p 360 and things like that, it was a very bad time. I could not, yeah, my, my pass through footage you saw of the higher frame rate stuff, I looked drunk as hell trying to play it because I could not play with that added in, but lately it was so bad. And that's not always the case these days with the newer, faster cards like the HD60X, the Live Gamer 4K and so on. So when it comes to capturing those higher frame rates, as I just mentioned, you are given the options inside of OBS to capture 240 FPS from the 1080p 240 mode or higher with the 360 mode and 120, 144 FPS from 1440p and so on. The results vary though. Any 60 FPS capture I did, be it from higher frame rate or not, came out smooth, looking fine, no problems. Any 120 FPS captures I did, mostly came out smooth. Every once in a while I'd see like a duplicated frame or something, but no, no major issues that would bother anyone. But the 240 FPS modes, which this device reports as a supported format for the device, it drops frames like crazy. Like we are talking, ridiculous frame drops where it just looks like it's barely even 60 fps like it looks horrible i'm playing it back in slow-mo here but like you cannot actually capture 240 fps over usb here with that and i did want to mention anything higher than 60 fps on this card does drop to mjpeg which is fine probably expected especially given the bandwidth constraints but anything higher than 120 fps and it just it looks really bad so i would stick to regardless of what you're passing through 120 fps or lower for your capture frame rates which if you're just streaming to Twitch or YouTube, all you need is 60 anyway. I did want to mention HDR. It does support HDR pass-through as you would expect for a modern device. So I was trying to play on my PS5 and my computer and stuff like that through to my LG OLED. And pass-through seemed fine, no issues there, but the capture of it was awful. It looks horrible. If you set it to just Rec. 709, most capture cards like this these days that support HDR pass-through have HDR to SDR tone mapping on board and will just make it look fine in OBS. This one does not. It gets overly bright, contrasty, punchy, saturated, like it looks ridiculous. But if you set it to the Rec. 2100 PQ or HLG modes, it still doesn't look right. And because I was going to do that and then just rely on OBS's built-in tone mapping that they added a couple versions ago. And Rec. 2100 PQ still looks a little too punchy and just like reds are way too bright and stuff like that. But then HLG still looks a little too flat. So HDR just doesn't entirely work super right here. Super weird. Anyway, as I mentioned, it, a standout feature here are these knobs for the microphone and stuff like that. I do think between that, the status lights on the front and things like that, this is kind of set up to be more like a TV set top box kind of capture solution that you run out to a computer or something, which makes sense given that most of what they make is these more, you know, enterprise AV gear. But given the amount of finickiness with the formats it supports and things like that, I'm not sure it really serves that purpose super well. It is plug and play over USB. You don't gotta download any drivers or anything and it works on Windows, Mac, and Linux, which is really nice to see. So the very first HDMI 2.1 capture card does support Mac and Linux out of the box as well as Windows, which is nice. I just, it's about what you'd expect to pay for Avermedia and Whatever Elgato's option will eventually be and Asus's option or whatever, Avermedia is the only one that had one go up for presale. Like the $260 price tag isn't out there, but given you can just wait a little bit and presumably everyone else's options from like big name companies will be a lot more stable and a lot better, I just hold off. Like I don't think it's worth it. The early adopter tax is just like, it's just, 
it, it's wild to get this before everyone else just kind of surprised it's on Amazon. They already had one listing that like sold out, but then there was another listing of this but that popped up. It's cool to play with. I'm just, I'm not sure that anyone doing content day to day should really go with it. Well, this will just serve as a little lesson to you early adopters out there. Sometimes being first isn't best. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, w it was a good effort, but, but these alt cards always just have like some weird issues. If you want to know about the upcoming HDMI 2.1 capture cards from Avermedia and Asus, I do have a video breaking them down and some concerns you might have right here that you should watch and remember to be kind. Rewind. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. Next time. <laughs> Don't forget to check out my OBS course and my other resources over on my new shop site, glitch.mov, linked below. 